Hello, welcome to Dream Again Africa, where we look into God's way of doing business. We equip and empower entrepreneurs on leading through the Word of God, being led by His Spirit, but above everything, being rooted in the Word. So we hope that as we continue to progress uh, in this season of Dream Again Africa, we will walk together this road. Even preparing for this program, we are seeing that this is not going to be easy. It doesn't mean that as we come into now working uh, intentionally through the word of God in our businesses and all of that, that things will immediately fall into place. It is clear that this is the battle because the battle to empower an African is a battle uh, to, for us as we restore, as we take back the, uh, the land, as we rebuild the continent so that the Africa's identity can rise up again and be confident and not reliant on um, any external forces to determine how things uh, should happen, but to allow the Word of God to be the leader of how things happen. Today's show is titled The New Economy, The Kingdom Economy, How to Do Business God's Way. So as we look into God's way of doing business, we are led back to the beginning where it all started with Adam and Eve as God planted them in the garden and given them the authority to lead, to steward the land, which takes us into how are we stewarding our lands, what is entrusted to us. We see governments of today led by democracy, socialism, communism, uh, dictatorship, and all these spirits that are flowing from the orphaned spirit, a spirit of not having the father as the lead and the head of the form. One of the biggest businesses in Africa uh, was the, created was the slave trade. And slave trade was truly really an outcome of the spirit uh, uh, of the father that is absent. And in the absence of the spirit of the father, that's where we see the management of resources through a mindset of scarcity instead of abundance. For when God put man in the land, he entrusted the resources to be led with an abundance mentality. So today we work on a day-to-day -day basis. We look into our situations financially. We are seeing that the reality is that today we are many, many people in Africa are living from hand to mouth. And this has all been the result of how the system has been set up because of the, the, the foundation of the education where we come from and how things has happened in our lives. We, we, we have drifted from truly, truly living the kingdom way. So one of the oppressions has been the spirit of oppression um, that has uh, uh, limited how one uh, uh, can move uh, forward in Africa and created certain parameters and systems that sort of shrink and make people dependent on the money or dependent on certain people. And this means that when um, there is dependency, it means that it leads people to situations where they have to shrink, reduce where they are in order to bow down to the authority without freedom to be, without freedom to lead. So as we go back to, the, uh, to leading God's way, we see that the new economy, what God is bringing and restoring in Africa today, we, uh, has got the spirit of freedom firmly embedded in it. For when you are working with what is in your hand, you are liberated then to create wealth. As in Deuteronomy 8, verse 18, it is written, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to create wealth. So today, as we look into kingdom economics, we welcome back Tabo. We promised last week that we will have him back on the show, um, and we have him today. So don't go away. Tabo's book is called The New Economy. It's one of the voices that God is using in Africa at this time, even as I met him recently coming from the different nations, Rwanda, Namibia, Malawi, Sudan, and all these nations where God is using him as one of the voices at this time. So don't go away. We will have him.
back here in studio. Welcome back and thank you for joining us. We promised to have Tabo back in studio and we welcome Tabo. Excited to have you back on the show. I'm so glad to be back mm -hmm. uh, once again. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, such an excitement. Thank to you. Really... Thank you. Thank you for being here. Going through your book uh, on kingdom economics, I recognize that this is not easy. It's not going to be easy. It means that we have to truly live what we say being being in the world, but not of this world. So as we talk into how we reset the system, mm -hmm. how we reset our system, um, just kindly just take us through currently the current system. How did this come about, this current system, so that we can understand uh, the background as we move and shift completely into God's kingdom? Well, uh, if you, well, this is actually a very big, uh, big thing. It's a very big battle. But you know, before I get on that, mm. there's one of the prophecies by Derek Botha, 2006, uh, in Johannesburg. They were mm. speaking around agriculture. Yeah. So he said something like, Africa will receive a new philosophy of business, social structures, you know, development, wealth, and quality of life. And it's going to confound, you know, the world of science and technology mm. and the Western and Eastern paradigm. And he will raise African academics who will mm have a new way of doing things which incorporates the truth and the academics and just who God is. Yeah. And so that really, at the time, it didn't, really didn't look like, you know, that was possible. What was that? I mean, everybody thought, I mean, everything is fine. What's yeah. this new thing? This is normal. You know? And I think we mm. only really started seeing the challenges, you know, when the recession took place and the global financial meltdown took place 2007, 8, mm. to realize that, there's something wrong here. Yeah, we've tried everything, you know, we've tried intellect, everything. strategies, and something all is wrong here. these other means. So if you really look at that, we currently in South Africa, we currently basically use a mixed economic system, which is basically could be a combination of um, ideologies such as communism and also a bit of capitalism in there, but mostly influenced by John Mayer Keynes uh, ideas. Okay. which was one of the economists in Britain, in Brit in Britain Cambridge. Mm. And obviously, lots of the system we use are influenced by economics, ideas, and ideologies, which really have taken years and years, decades of being built. Mm. And they all have a particular... Uh, uh, they, they really want to achieve something. There is mm. a reason why they were all designed and all that. Mm. And so at the moment in time, uh, are we sitting with really a, a, a ticking bomb? Uh, because this is really not the way. There's got to be something new that happens. Mm. And so there's a frustration. Just go outside, you know, the studio, or just go somewhere, drive somewhere. You will see that people are frustrated. Mm. You know, there's a revolt and there's these. In fact, there's a strike in July to mm. put the country on a standstill. Mm. The VAT increase, you know, the petrol increase. And if you look at other countries, actually the petrol is quite lower and, the, and other things are quite low. So you realize there's a struggle, there's a battle out there happening yeah, that's going because on. of a particular way of doing things and a model and certain ideologies. But it's good them. to an extent that we have come to, uh, to this place, that we experienced this pain in order to come to a position of saying, We've tried everything. We've tried what we thought we could. We've been educated. We are led by economists who are very highly uh, educated, but um, it hasn't worked. Yeah. In establishing now the kingdom way of doing things, what is important? One of the key things important, are, I always say foundations are important when you want to build anything. Mm. So if you want to build a very tall building, you have to deepen the foundation. So if we want to rebuild, you know, continent, Africa, we mm. have to first check the foundations as mm. to are we sitting on the right foundation or what's going on. And at this mm. point in time, our foundation is very shaky. We've mm. got a Western foundation. If, mm. it's, if it's not American, it's actually uh, Russian. Sure. You know, so we're sitting on those ideologies that are actually there, that came up. So it's so a whole, it's a mix. There isn't even uh, an African thing. paradigm. Mm. There isn't even an African thinking. So we, mm. we kept 
playing in between the two ideas which mm. have failed. Uh, mm. Even in, in Moscow, communism has failed. Mm. Uh, even in America, capitalism has actually failed. Mm. And so they're trying to mix up. So you keep on trying to bring this and this. So mm. we have to check the foundation as to say, uh, is this the right foundation? And so on the New Economy book, I really go back into foundational truth. That's mm. why I, I call the book Ancient Hope for Modern Economics, meaning mm. that if we go back to ancient truth as to what did God have in mind? You know, is God really involved in economics? And is, does he really care about how business is done? Does he care mm. about the structures in Africa, mm. development? Mm. And I realize that God mm. cares. God cares. We are the ones that have moved away. Yeah, it comes from there. I mean, I'm, I'm just reminded just even of the meaning of the economy as we speak about kingdom economy, mm. uh, meaning of economy coming from the Greek word or economia, yes. uh, meaning uh, stewarding, uh, uh, stewarding the land. And yeah. here in Africa, when it comes to stewarding, it links into leadership, how things have been led, how government has been led, and how business uh, has been led. So talking just uh, briefly on the issue of economy mm. and, and, and stewardship in general in Africa, what do you see? Uh, even the idea how to put this across. I mean, when I wrote this book, it's because the media was propagating a thought that South Africa's economy, it's going down the drain. This, was, 20, this was 2014. Mm. I, mean, I mean, look, um, look. the focus was so much at the time on South Africa because it was a time whereby uh, there were issues in government and issues just everywhere. Mm. And I remember that we, we, we were quite aware that we might head this way. I mean, when they introduced e-tolls, uh, 20 billion, it was chaotic. when there was a, quite mm. a lot of number of, uh, of poor financial management in government, corruption increasing, mm. a whole lot of that. You could see mm. that we're going to head mm. that way. I and saw even with the government institutions, if you read every Sunday newspapers talking about the funds frozen. Yes. And so these are all funds which had to do with entrepreneurship. I was actually affected yes. by one of them because I was busy in the middle of uh, mm. one biggest deal, which was life changing. And due to corruption, yes. the, the organization was frozen and no funds yeah. were released, which is an outcome of... Um, which is which is actually the, 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 the truth. And you are mm, not the only one affected. Mm. So the book for me at the time, I, I really had the, 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 the voice of the Lord saying, you need to write this book as a, as a response to say, uh, there is a new economy, an alternate you know, economy, way of doing things than just what they're doing. And I need you to write this book, release it and go take it to parliament. And I did exactly that. I took it to mm. Parliament and we launched it last mm. year in Parliament. Mm. But the key was that we have to release a sound that says there's hope for our nation and there's hope for our continent. And as we do that, we begin mm. to marshal everything around that word that there's hope for this nation and hope. And the key part was to bring in ancient biblical truth mm. that in the midst of what's going on, uh, you know, that God had a plan. His plan was that he put men in a garden that had all the resources. Mm. It's funny that when you <laughs> read the Bible, you realize that uh, on day five of creation, God put every re kind of resource there before he could actually put men mm. in, in the garden. Mm. So mm. everything was set. Mm. And so when he put men, he put men to steward quite mm. a, an abundant, you know, a real mm. estate that had gold, diamond, Mm. all kinds of minerals, mm. and it was productive. Everything was there. Everything was all there. All the resources that man would need Everything was before there. he put them on the so, so, so that was, there was a perfect economic system, and that's why he said, I'm giving you seed. I need you to manage this seed. Mm. So when you manage seed, basically, his role was to ensure that there's, that there's proper cultivation and there's sustainability. But the other part was that he said, replenish the ad, meaning that mm. replicate what's going on here mm. throughout the rest of the ad. Mm. And that, that for me was so key mm. that there was an economy because the word economics, like we said, it's stewardship. So Adam mm. was a steward. He understood how to steward the resources mm. uh, in, in, in that perspective of abundance. Mm. But the challenge is that when he fell, so when he fell, they were now kicked outside of that environment. Meaning that uh, outside of that system uh, out of that, that was system, protected. Out of that environment of abundance, mm. now they had to work hard 
till the land, work for food, which they never had to. Mm. And that's where you see a different economy, different way of doing things coming in. Mm. That's why if you go to varsity, one of the presupposition of economics is that the resources are scarce. Sure. Yeah. They're scarce. And because they're scarce, now we must decide on the three questions, such as what we must produce, how we should do it. And then there's a the last question, for who should we produce it for? For who, for who? should we Now, that's the inequality it? word that comes in, because mm. that word then creates what we call monopolies, where you have few people controlling the resources. And that's exactly what happened, because you had Nimrod mm. becoming, building an empire, mm. and you actually continued to have the Egyptian empire. You had different empires mm. basically controlling, it's a control of resource. Mm. So the whole history, even of the Bible, the whole history in life, you had empires after empires from the Babylonian to the, the, the Persian Median to, you know, the Greek Empire, Alexander the Great, to the Roman Empire. Mm. It was about resources. Well, it, uh, uh, empires. it was empires to mm. the British Empire. It was about mm. the control of resources, the mm. colonization that you saw. Mm. It was about control of resources. The revolts that have happened over history, like the Russian revolts, mm. you know, of, of, the, of, of Marxism, mm. the French Revolution, it was about bread, it mm. was about resources, was about the, you know, that the there is that sense of, because there were certain laws, policies and arrangements that have been done. Slavery, you know, slave trade, it was a big business yeah. and it was about the control of resources. So all of what we've got now, even apart, even, even apartheid, you know, even all this. It was about mm. exclusive kind of economic arrangements mm. to ensure that certain people have got resources, others don't. Yeah. And so if we're looking at rebuilding Africa and South Africa, mm. we really have to now start taking that into cognizance and saying that, what is it that should happen? Yeah. And for me in this book, I say that God will have to destroy all of this all of these systems, they're going to have to collapse. Mm. And that's why there's a shaking. In the, in the Hebrews, it says, you know, once again, I shake the heavens and the earth. <laughs> and that's why we're going through this mm. process mm. right now. Mm. There's a shaking mm. because mm. he wants to establish the foundation so that we can build now proper economic proper systems. structures. Wow, that is just so awesome. That's so powerful. That's exactly uh, what I was wanting you to, uh, to lay so that we can understand if it is entrepreneurship. I know that in business, uh, also be just coming across uh, entrepreneurs, just uh, the bleeding and the, and, the, and the toughness and the emptiness and the being brought to the knee um, at, at this time because we have deviated from God's way of building. So as we look into the foundations now, as we shift our focus on rebuilding God's way, um, just remembering uh, one of the uh, statements that uh, we was highlighted uh, in your book is about just how when we come out of universities, because now you've got your, uh, your accolade, you've got your MBA, your master's in business, and you've got your gown, mm -hmm. uh, and now it's all about you and just the spirit of pride and ego that comes from that. And you highlight in your book that... Um, in kingdom um, way of doing things, because for kingdom is about a king uh, leading a kingdom mm -hmm. as we look into the economy. So we look into um, the, uh, the king, the head, the leader or, uh, of the business, not just thinking about themselves, but thinking about the kingdom in which they, uh, they are leading. So in these foundations, as we um, uh, move along uh, deeper into this, what, are your, uh, what is your advice from this point onwards? Now we have bled, now we've come down, now we've emptied ourselves, and now we can see that um, we are in this world, but not of mm -hmm. this world. What does that mean? That, you see, that is a very difficult part because we come from a season where you, you preach a message and then you kind of like try to, to follow and do what it says. But with, a bit what's you comfortable. Know, you yeah, do the comfortable but, part. But, but within this season, God's doing you know, his thing. He wants you to be the message first sure. before you can speak it. And, 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 and that really deals with mm. changing the perspective, how you think. And so when we talk about uh, a new economy in Africa, you mm. know, we 
so there's going to be a lot of focus in terms of circumcision, you know, off a heart, in terms mm. of uh, the business people, everybody that's getting involved. A change of couple of uh, uh, perspective. You know, one of the perspective that must change is, you know, it's it's basically the fact that um, it's all about me, me, me. You know, and even when we use the word kingdom, we we use it to suit ourselves. Even when we talk about servanthood, we talk about servanthood in the context of someone must serve me mm. as a as a CEO instead of sure. me serving. You know, so so we write books, we drive that aspect within the context of us, and so. So we need to really redefine lots of position, lots of understanding uh, mm -hmm. within uh, this season, mm -hmm. and uh, and and I use a I, I use a, a scripture uh, in in my book when I talk about uh, you know entering into a, a new season that in Joshua five, you know mm -hmm. Joshua before they came into the land you know in Canaan, mm -hmm. he was instructed to camp at Gilgal. Now, Gilgal, basically, it's a place where they camped. Mm. It's, it means to roll away the yes, reproach yeah. of the past. Mm. Many, many of those people were mm. people who probably were born in the wilderness. Some, mm. though, even though they were there, they had a lot of issues of the past. So that place was so key before mm. they could enter that new season to really transition. So Gilgal, basically, it's a place mm. also mm. of transitioning. Mm. It's a place of new beginning where you mm. have to let go of the old, take mm. on a new paradigm. Mm. What was key there is that when they were there camping, they observed the Passover, and after they observed the Passover, they ate of the fresh produce of, of the, the land, fresh fruit. of the land. Mm. And so meaning that also that symbolized a change of economic system because they had come from Egypt, which is an old system, mm. but they were also in the wilderness where they were dependent yeah. on manna. Dependent so on where mind. we are as a country or continent, there's a sense of dependency. We depended on whoever has been created. You know, and there yeah. has to be a shift to say, you are about to be landowners, you're about to be people mm. that are producers, mm. Mm. you mm. know, uh, and there has to be that shift in mind that you're going to move away from being dependent, mm -hmm. you know, passive into active dependence. So it prepares the mind Thank to you. say it's time to be more entrepreneurial. Thank you. But also the hard condition to say, this is about God. Mm. This is Him bringing us into that place because He desires that His people actually prospers so that they could actually bring about, uh, eradicate that lawlessness. I mean, mm. the reason that we have to be at the forefront of things, there's corruption, there's lawlessness. So we have to come in and displace that. We are mm. actually a restraining force. Be the voices. Be the voice. Be the restraining force and actually restraining force. be a restraining force that. in the marketplace mm. everywhere to bring in the right ways of the Lord, the kingdom ways of the Lord so that the earth reflects who He is. Who He is. Wow. I, I cannot say anything more from there. Uh, besides recognizing that as we move into building and setting this foundation, one of the very important uh, things to do at this time is really just to check our hearts uh, where we are at uh, in terms of our journey with the Lord. Because as we close um, completely the chapter of the past and moving into kingdom economics, I'm reminded of the book of John in John 3 verse 3. Jesus says, most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So as we close the show today, we recognize the importance, the biggest foundation one can, can, can lay for their businesses is the foundation of the heart where your heart is for as we move along into rebuilding God's way, it's very important where things will flow for the heart leads the stewardship. The stewardship is the leadership of your business and your business is must fall under the kingdom way of doing things. So, uh, for example, if you are watching us today and you know that you are not born again, we need Jesus to be able to walk in his path in order to be able to hear him, to hear the leading of the Spirit. For in the kingdom, things will happen differently from the systems that we have seen. So thank you for joining us today. 
We are excited by this season. It's actually a very exciting season. We've been brought down. We are saying, dream again, Africa. Dream again, Africa. Arise and dream again, Africa, as we reset the system. See you next week and goodbye.